Hey, it's Matt, your average gamer, and for this video, we're going to be going over my top 11 tips and tricks for Black Myth Wukong. We're going to start here at number 11 with playing aggressively, and we're also going to go over some of the tough bosses in chapter 2 and 3, so there's going to be some spoilers for those chapters. This will also act as a guide for those tough bosses during those chapters as well. Now, what I mean by playing aggressive is this game is much more like Sekiro and Bloodborne, minus the parries, than it is anything like Elden Ring or Dark Souls 3. You want to be close to a boss and you want to play as aggressive as possible. Being close can limit their moveset as well, and it gives you an opportunity to dodge as well too, and that's a big thing later on because eventually you're going to get some upgrades and whatnot that can cause perfect dodges to give you bonuses like extra damage that you get afterwards. You should take advantage of this, try to get perfect dodges close, and then follow up by attacking more. By the way, this will also go over some of the performance on PS5 as well. I did run into some minor issues with frame rate issues in Chapter 3. I'm currently in early Chapter 5 now. There's been a few issues. I will talk about that throughout. This is on PS5, so if you're wondering about performance, you'll get a lot of your answers in this video as well. So, by the way, for the Yellow Wind Sage, I'm saving, if you notice, most of my freezes, most of my mana for Phase 2 and 3, because that's going to be really important later on. I'm going to continue to hit him and try to dodge his basic attacks early, and also save most of my flasks for the latter half of the fight, which is always going to be the more tougher fight. So basically all the tougher bosses are going to have phases and when you get to phase two, sometimes there's three phases, etc. It's going to be more challenging as you go on. So you want to try to get as much damage as you can early on, learn the basic attacks quickly so you can dodge them and counterattack. And that's one of the best tips that I can give you right there is learning the early moveset more so that you could sustain your HP and all that for the latter half of the fights because that's going to help you substantially more and it's also going to be harder to dodge some of their moves in the later phases and a lot of them have area effect attacks as well. So later in this video, by the way, another thing we're going to show is a will farm that's going to help you get skill points and get will so you can buy stuff and all that and whatnot. It's going to really be helpful because there's a really good one in Chapter 2, and there's a whole bunch more in this video that's going to be useful too, including NPCs that you're definitely going to want to run into and how to upgrade your flask. Also, at the end of this video, if you end up liking it, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know if you want to see more Black Myth Wukong. I've been really enjoying this game. It's been fantastic so far. I gave it an 8 out of 10, mainly for performance issues and a little bit of replay value, I can tell, because the build variety is a little bit limited. But overall, this game has been excellent. All right, now back to the Yellow Wind Sage. This is a really tough boss fight in the final section. You're going to want to save most of your freezes for this part, and you're going to want to stack your light combo damage in combination with using Pillar Stance. Pillar Stance is huge here, and it can do a ton of poise damage. Okay, this is the final boss for Chapter 2, and it is definitely going to test you, no doubt. The main thing is he's got a ton of HP. He could dish out a lot of damage in his final phase, but up until his final phase, which is essentially Phase 3... He doesn't really do too much that you can't dodge. Now, he has a really annoying kick windup that ends up being a grab attack. Be aware of that. It starts with him running towards you. You're going to want to dodge that every time. It does massive damage, and you'll end up essentially getting his spear hit into you, and then he's going to pull it out for more damage. It ends up being a lot, so you want to avoid that one. I get hit by the storm here, but it doesn't do a lot of damage. I'm going to talk about buffs later on, but you could use the buffs that allow you to take more damage as well. That's really helpful for the final part of the fight, especially with the storm. Generally speaking, though, keep an eye on it because it'll send you up in the air and continue playing aggressively. So basically freeze, light combo, and then using pillar stance. That's going to be huge for you here. And we're going to jump into our next tip, which is going to be knowing your NPCs. So when I started playing Black Myth Wukong, you're going to go here on screen. Pay attention to where I go on screen. This is where you upgrade your gourds. I ended up being kind of confused about where to go back to to upgrade certain things. And not only that, I just really didn't do it. I didn't look around to do it. I was running around with like four or five gourd flasks, essentially flash refills for like the longest time. You definitely want to upgrade these as you move on. I didn't upgrade these like once for the first two chapters, but there it is right there. It's in the white marsh area. It's going to be this monkey NPC, and this is where you're going to be able to upgrade your gourd, your flask, essentially, and you could actually buy things from him. He's got a store as well that's really useful, too. 
So remember where he is in chapter one and go back to him anytime you get the items to upgrade gourds. And for me, I think I upgraded. It's probably one time that I upgraded in the first two chapters, which is crazy. But eventually when I got to early chapter four, I went back and did a lot of stuff and caught up with a lot of stuff. And that was because I really needed to. There is a lot to explore in this game. Yeah, I would say don't rush through this game. It feels like a boss rush that you're running through it constantly, but there is a lot to explore. They put a lot in the open areas, especially Chapter 3. When you get to Chapter 3, there's going to be so many different treasures and open areas to explore. Definitely check them out. As you can see, we upgraded our healing flask so that it gives us additional HP around 43% now. And then this other one at the temple, it's by the Tiger Temple, it's going to be the Cellar. That's going to be the one for medicine, and this is a really important NPC as well. So what are medicines? They're essentially your buffs, and you're going to be able to upgrade them. You're going to be able to get some new stuff essentially from this NPC, and you're going to be able to buy buffs, craft things, and it's really useful. Some can increase your critical hits, your damage, your damage reduction, your defense. There's a lot of good stuff here. Yeah, those of you that know me from Elden Ring, you probably know I love buffs because they help make these games a little bit easier for average players like myself, so they're really useful. At number 9, our tip is the Will Farm in Chapter 2, which is at Rock Rest Flat. So Rock Rest Flat has a ton of enemies right by where you rest, the shrine you rest. You're just going to go around in a circle and take them all on. You can actually get upwards of somewhere between 30 and 50,000 will per hour doing this run. It's really useful early on, and a lot of these enemies aren't too difficult to take on either. And this is probably one of the toughest enemies in the area because you have to break his shield. But overall, the enemies here aren't too bad. We're going to talk about stance changes later in the video too and when you should use those. Overall though, I do like pillar stance the best. You just go around in a circle, take on all these enemies, follow my route directly, take them on, and then go back, rest, and fight them again. That's the big deal here, and it's going to net you a lot of will, which you're going to be able to use to upgrade things. You're going to be able to use that at the store, and then, of course, you're going to get a lot of skill points with this as well, too, which is going to level you up and get you stronger. I would use this one early on. And by the way, my friend Pastor Gains Games, he's a friend of the channel. We did a collaboration a while back. He's got this farm and another early game farm. But I'm going to leave that in the description below if you want to check out a chapter one farm as well. And at number eight, we have Explore a lot. This one may be straightforward, but I was rushing through the game until early chapter four when I decided to go back through a lot of the areas. And I recommend just exploring as you go. Do not rush this game. It's great and it's incredibly rewarding. You're going to constantly find good treasures. By the way, when you're in that cell area, the objective is to go up. I know that may not be as straightforward as it sounds. It took me a minute to find that out. But yeah, find as many treasures as you can and explore as much as you can. It's going to give you a lot of items that you need. Most of the time, they end up being really good. And the next tip on here is going to be how I'm leveling things up. Upgrade freeze, pillar stance, and your HP and stamina. These are the most important, in my opinion, early on because pillar stance is amazing. Stamina and HP are incredibly important, and freeze is very convenient for bosses. So I probably would have gotten walled by a couple of these bosses had I not upgraded Pillar Stance and Freeze. They're a great combination. Doing your light combination on the boss after you freeze them is perfect. And then following up after you stack those skill points with Pillar Stance can knock them down and you can do even more damage. Shout out to Din7, by the way, in Discord for recommending that I upgrade Pillar Stance first. That was really helpful. Definitely something you want to upgrade with Freeze. It's going to be perfect for bosses. And that leads us to our next tip at number six. Use combos and break poise frequently. Yeah, so the big thing here, especially when you have some of the lower poise bosses, which you're going to run into where they get knocked down easily, you want to try to finish your light combos. And eventually you're going to be able to dodge and continue your combo as you upgrade those. And then, of course, using Pillar Stance. And then eventually we're going to use Clones and Freeze, too. But the point here is simple. Some of the bosses have really low poise. They get knocked down easier. You want to focus on that. And the more they're knocked down, especially if you use the Clones in combination with Freeze and Pillar Stance, these bosses will essentially be stun locked and their HP will just disappear before your eyes. Which is precisely what we want when we have some of these bosses because the thing about the smaller bosses that have less poise, they tend to do more damage because they're quicker. So you want to just knock them down as many times as you can and then of course destroy them as fast as you can. And you can use things like clones, freezing, and then using the charged pillar stance at the end to knock them down again.
And after this fight, we end up getting the Ring of Fire. Haven't done too much with that yet, although it's probably decent. A lot of the skills so far have been pretty good. Next up is going to be at number five, use buffs and spirits because they can make the fight substantially easier. So I like the tiger pellets to add damage. They're like perfect for a lot of the boss fights. And then the damage reduction one is going to be huge too. As far as the spirits go, I use the one that you get early on. That's the giant, whatever it is, the baby head or whatever the heck it is. And um, yeah, you can knock down the bosses. You could do massive damage. If you use the tiger pellets beforehand, you can get even more damage out of that one. Mainly, I play this game like I do Sekiro, where I'm just constantly focusing on trying to build up poise damage. The more I can knock down the boss, the better it is for me. I mean, that's just how it is. The more I stun the boss, the more I can follow up with light combos, the more damage I can do, the more I can get in, and ultimately, the faster the boss goes down. So this boss is actually pretty tough. Gave me a little bit of a tough time. She is rather difficult. She has a lot of attacks that do a lot of electricity thunder damage, and that could actually debuff you and you take more damage in your HP bar and stuff, so that could be a challenge. If you use shock resistance before this fight, though, you can make it substantially easier. This part, by the way, is really hard for me to dodge. You have to dodge at the last minute as they come near you, but for me, I find it difficult. The late attacks I have much harder time with than your standard regular hits because you just have to time it when it's right on top of you to get the perfect dodge. But yeah, this boss definitely is going to probably give you a hard time the first time through. When you get these lightning pillars, you just want to dodge around, run around as much as you can. She's not going to follow up with too many attacks until afterwards. And then once she's done with that, you want to get back and be close to her because you need to get in some damage and you want to limit her moveset. Quick note on the frames for PS5. It does look pretty good overall, but there are some frame drops, especially in Chapter 3. I think the snow area just does that. It's just too much with Unreal Engine 5. However, I found nothing game-breaking yet, and I'm early in Chapter 5 currently, so there's been nothing in terms of game-breaking bugs yet. And you can see, same concept here. We're going to use the clones again. We're going to attack her as much as possible. This fight's going to be tight because it is challenging. We're going to build up that pillar stance and then use that to stun her when we can because then we can follow up with another light combo and continue the damage. And it's the same thing we talked about, too. You could actually use buffs in Phase 2 to help you. I didn't have a lot of time here, but if you're able to, if you're quick with stuff, buffs would definitely help in Phase 2. For Phase 3, rather, I think it's 3 at this point because it's very difficult and she has a lot of AoE attacks. Also, side note, I'm really enjoying this game. The more I play Black Myth Wukong, the more I realize that it is a very good Souls-like and challenging RPG. I know they don't want to call it a Souls-like, but it has so many elements with those games that I would put it right on par with that. It can be incredibly challenging at times, and it's very rewarding for some of these bosses when you take them down. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff and a lot of stuff to like here ultimately there's so much to this game so far i know a lot of it is similar combos and the build variety is going to be relatively simple i'm going to eventually do builds for the game but it will be pretty simple because there's not too much variety there however the fighting and combat is so fluid and so good that it really reminds me of sekiro which was a great game. It didn't have the most replay value for me. I only beat it twice, so I'm going to have to see about this game. But ultimately, it definitely feels like that. Tip number four, use clones when you're in a pinch. If you're ever in a pinch or you're having a hard time, they are perfect to throw in if you're having a difficult time. Yeah, these can be really difficult, some of the bosses, because of the fact that, especially the ones where you're hitting their feet, where it's just difficult to kind of time where they're going to hit you. A lot of Souls games have this problem with some of the bigger bosses and camera angles. I think Black Myth Wukong does handle it quite well, though. But with that said, since I don't know when I'm going to be hit and he's got a lot of AoE spam in Phase 2, eventually we're going to use our clones because that's going to help us substantially. And he can also target those as well. They can kind of take the pressure away from you while doing damage. And they can even do boys damage too. And as you see, we knocked down the boss again. That's the big thing here. I'm going to continue knocking down every boss I can knock down. I'm going to do that over and over again the best I possibly can because that's going to allow me to follow up with attacks and then eventually build up pillar stance, use that again, and possibly get another knockdown. And of course, the clones are incredibly helpful. You can see the massive amount of HP coming off the boss. The boss isn't even really able to do that much here. Other than a couple kicks here and there, we're able to get in a lot of stackable damage, a lot of posture breaking, and a lot of pressure on the boss. 
And the clones stay around for a long time too. As you upgrade them, you can upgrade the duration, the amount of damage. There's a lot to upgrade there. They're worth upgrading too. That being said, I still believe you should upgrade Freeze first and then go for the clones afterwards. They are very useful, but Freeze is definitely more useful. And of course, we're going to end up victorious. This boss for me wasn't too challenging. I think it took a total of two tries. Was not bad at all compared to some of the other bosses in the game. I didn't even use much of my health blast or anything. I was able to take him down. He wasn't too bad. Let's jump into our next tip here at number three, which is going to be don't give up. Okay, so what do I mean by don't give up? I'm going to explain right now what I mean by that. So in a lot of these games, if I get beat up early in a fight, for the longest time, I would kind of let the boss kill me and then reset because it started out poorly. This is going to be an example of me starting out relatively poorly and still coming down with a victory at the end of the fight. So this goes pretty bad. This move, by the way, leaves you with like no HP, but for some reason it doesn't kill you. I'm not sure why. It just ends up giving you shock and bringing you down to zero HP. But anyways... We're going to have a little bit of a difficult time, as I mentioned, with this fight, but we're going to stick it through and see how we do instead of resetting and see if we end up having a little bit of better luck. This may be just my habit, but I feel like other people do this too, where we just end up getting beat up so quickly, so early on, and then we're just like, all right, I'll let the boss kill me because I got hit too many times. And that does happen a lot. But for me, lately with Black Myth Wukong, I'm finding sticking it out is always the answer, and sometimes the later phase ends up not being as bad as the first phase. Because the truth is, at the end of the day, you could do it. You can get it done. Just focus up, make the best of it, stack as much damage as you can. If you get beat up a little bit, you may be able to make up for it later on. If you have a lot of mana left, you could always use your freezes, and you have your clones too. So this boss was really cool for sure. I honestly think this is one of the better looking bosses in the game. There's a lot of cool bosses, but this one stands out for sure because I feel like it's a dragon that's kind of done right. Although I, the camera angle is still a little bit janky at times. I think we need to figure out dragons and camera angles in Souls games. Well, I can remain hopeful that eventually you'll get those right, but a lot of times we just end up not being able to see the boss, which makes it more difficult, and then I end up getting hit as a result. As far as this dragon goes, you want to apply the pressure to his head as much as you can, and of course pay attention to his tail attacks as well as his head butts, because they do massive damage. I believe one of those head moves where he moves towards you ends up being the grab attack. You don't want to get hit by that anyway, because even if it doesn't kill you, it's going to leave you with no HP. So look at his health. Look at this dragon's health right now, and look at the health I have on screen left. Let's check out how this fight goes. So the dragon has around half HP after this move here, and guess what? I have around half HP with no healing flask, and I'm currently dealing with thunder damage apparently as well. So yeah. This fight was probably not going to go well. Could have given up, but I'm glad ultimately that I did not give up. I stuck it through, I focused up, and I concentrated on what he was going to do in phase two. And that's the big thing here, focusing up and realizing that you can do it. You can get it done. If you really focus, you can dodge, you can make the right moves, and you can damage the boss enough to take them down quickly. If you still have some buffs left, you could use them as well to stack damage, get through the second phase faster. And I'm confident in you. If I'm average at these games, you're probably decent or better than me. So honestly, you could do it. You could honestly do it. Don't give up at any point. Continue to fight through. Apply pressure as much as you can. If you get killed anyway, you'll start again. Yeah, sure. That's going to happen from time to time. But you may also leave in victory as well. All right, now this dragon's about to go down really fast, and I don't have a lot of HP left for this fight. Let's see how much damage we can do, what we can do to this dragon, see if we can knock him down again, stack some damage, and end up victorious in a really tough fight. All right, let's move to the dragon now, see how much damage we could do. I believe I buffed myself there for extra damage. I also have the perfect dodge extra damage as well, I believe, at this point too, which is really helpful. I recommend getting that, and this dragon is going to go down. Did you see that? I had very minimal health, and we took him down. Leads us to our next tip, which is going to be gather everything because buffs are really important. So when you get to the jail area in chapter three, you want to grab these snake head mushrooms or whatever they're called. They're going to be great for giving you tiger pellets, which add damage. And of course, it has your farming stuff. I recommend farming everything. Every once in a while, you're going to run across enemies that can surprise you as well. 
But when you beat them, they're going to reward you with usually even more crafting materials. Get as much crafting materials as you can. Buffs can help substantially in this game. That's going to lead us to our final tip here, and that is don't get stuck on one thing. I'm going to explain this and this tough boss fight. So a lot of us have a tendency to build on one thing and get stuck on one thing, but you can respect your skills at any time in this game, which is amazing. Now for this boss fight, I was having a really hard time with pillar stance, but when I switched to the regular running charge, it helped me substantially. Seriously, the running charge, you could usually use two of them to break his gold stance that he has here. And then, of course, we could use our spirit as well, which could do massive posture damage. And then you continue to follow up with damage afterwards. And, of course, make sure you upgrade your light combos as much as you can. Because that's a big deal here, right? You want to stance break him as much as you can. Don't use pillar stance for this fight. It's a lot harder to use. It does work, but a lot of times he can knock you down with his electricity attacks. You're better off using the other charge attack, which you can also charge as you're running towards him. Also, pay attention to each phase. You're going to start with less HP, I've noticed, on each phase, so be sure to heal right away. If you have the thing that heals you with the flask to the full health, I believe, with the first sip of the flask, that's really helpful, too. And, of course, we're going to get in a charge attack there for massive damage. And, yes, this boss is difficult. You are probably going to have a hard time with this fight. This is probably going to be the, one of the first bosses where you really have a hard time. That other boss I showed earlier has a lot of HP. This boss is different because you have to deal with his gold phase in which he does not take damage. So I want to mention that after I changed to the charged hit, it only took me two tries this fight. Literally just two tries after changing to that, whereas Pillar Stance, I had tried it between 10 and 15 times at least, and I wasn't having much luck. So that's why I'm putting this as my number one tip. Don't be afraid to change stuff based on the fight. Not every single combat strategy is going to work for every fight. There's going to be challenges along the way that are going to test you and say, hey, whatever you're using is not working, change to something else. And once I did, it got so much easier because I was able to break him out of his gold phase easier by charging, running away from him, and then just getting in that second charge. And then that second one's always going to break him. And after he's broken, you can follow up with a whole bunch of attacks, stun him, and do a lot of damage, stack a lot of damage up. Which is your main goal. And you could use buffs here again. Use the tiger pellets, the enhanced tiger pellets if you have them. You can do a lot of damage with those. Again, this is one of the tougher fights, especially early in the game, or at least midway through the game, probably close to the mid game. And you're going to have to deal with a lot of frustrating attacks that do high damage. Another tip here is always make sure you're at full health because a lot of his attacks can pretty much take out your entire health bar. And once again, I'm going to charge, 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 and then you could stop this attack. You're able to stop this attack with a stun, which is hugely helpful because it's very difficult to avoid. And then once again, follow up again with the light attack combos and do as much damage as you possibly can. And yeah, changing that really helped me. Being able to change on the fly is really excellent. You could switch stances at any time, and I kind of upgraded a few things, just a couple things for this one, and it worked out in the end because the stun was the big deal here. Being able to stun him and being able to get him out of his gold phase where he doesn't take any damage. With that said, you will get this guy in no time. I have no, no doubt about that. I believe in you, honestly. After the dragon fight you saw, and I'm average at these games for the most part, you can do it. You can definitely do it. These fights, they're very tough. I've heard the final chapter is really tough. I'm going to go over that in a little bit, too, because I'm going to talk about I'm early chapter 5, basically how the next couple videos are going to go. But real quick, we got to end this boss because this boss is frustrating. And yeah, you're going to get, you're possibly going to get walled here. A lot of players may get walled here for a little bit. But if you go for the poise damage, the regular charge, the running charge, which you can hold, you can get him out of that gold phase and you can take him down no problem. Thanks for watching this one. I appreciate everybody that tuned in to my Black Myth Wukong tips and tricks, especially going over chapter two and three. Now for my next video, it's going to be chapter four and five. And then my final tips and guide video will go over chapter six, including the toughest bosses along the way. If you want to see more Black Myth Wukong content, be sure to hit the like button, comment below, and let me know. This game has been amazing. I can't wait to do some more videos for it. Have a wonderful day.